Okay, so now let's talk about when we have flatness tolerance applied to a derived median plane. So when we're doing this, you're going to see it with the flatness right next to the size dimension. So that flatness tolerance applied to that size dimension. And remember, when we do this, rule number one does not apply anymore to this tolerance feature of size. So it's no longer restricted by the limits of size. It's restricted by my flatness tolerance. Now, second thing to remember is that it controls the drive medium plane. That's the collection of midpoints. So if you have something that's perfectly symmetric on both sides, well, that surface can be as wonky as it wants to be, as long as it's within the size tolerance, as long as it's the same amount of wonkiness on both sides. Because my drive medium plane would be um, the same. My eraser, there it goes. <laughs> Being weird. So, when we control the drive median line, we don't control surface line variations. When we control the drive median plane, we don't constrain these surface variations. They're going to be constrained by my virtual condition, but that's about it. Now, how do we verify drive median plane when it's at our um, regardless of feature size? We don't get that nice thing where we can make a gauge. That only happens with the max projection condition. Um, the only way you're going to be able to do this is to do a point pose points measurements. Um, usually you can have a computer or some sort of coordinate measuring machine that can help you do this or automate this process. Um, and then from that you can derive where the median plane is and determine is it flat or not. So it's not terrible. It's not super easy either. Um, this is probably honestly a lot better in many cases than trying to do flatness of a surface because you can automate this very quickly with a computer while you would have to do a lot of reorienting with a surface. Okay, now if it's at the max material condition, sorry, we have the max material condition modifier, then things are a little bit different. We can actually test things with a gauge. Now this only works for very small sections, obviously we can't build this giant gauge, but if we build a gauge was at the virtual condition of our you know, feature, which would be for a solid feature, the max drill condition size plus the tolerance. And if my feature can fit inside of that, then it passes. Its straightness tolerance would pass as long as its size tolerance had already passed. We can also do the reverse where if we have a slot, we would build a gauge that is the minimum slot size minus the tolerance. So the cool thing about functional gauge is that additional tolerance is automatically accommodated as it moves away from the max drill condition. Because it's gotten smaller, it can move around more in the gauge. But you only ever do this if you want to do it a billion times. Because you waste, you're going to spend money on making this gauge, and it's very difficult because you make it to very, very fine tolerances. So that's it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.